Mm-hmm. And uh, when I was in high school, uh, that's back in Israel, you know, I, I read mostly in Hebrew, but I wanted to practice my English. We, we learned English in high school and I really wanted to, you know, get better in English. So mm-hmm. I decided um, to start reading uh, books in, in English. So oh. the, the first book that I read was actually Misery by Stephen King, because I read it in Hebrew before and I saw the movie. So I knew, oh. okay, I know the story. So probably it's going to be easier for me to understand the English. Welcome to Story Power, a bi-monthly podcast where my guests and I geek out about the stories we're passionate about in all different genres, styles, and formats. My name is Lucinda Sage Midgordon, and I started this podcast during the summer of 2020 at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. As I watched the reaction of my friends, family, and social media circle, I noticed that many people turned to stories for comfort and help in making sense of the craziness going on around them. My goal was to do the same for my listeners. But as I chatted with my guests throughout the first year, I discovered that their personal stories were the most fascinating thing about each episode. Neil Gaiman says, Fairy tales are more than true, not because they tell us that dragons exist, but because they tell us that dragons can be beaten. I now know that sharing our experiences with others helps us defeat our own dragons. It is our stories that connect us to one another. Let's see what wisdom today's guest has to share with us. Today, I'm talking with Moshe Mikinovsky. I hope I said that right. And we met via Podmatch. And you have a new book that is Mm -hmm. going to be coming out soon. So Mm -hmm. I'm hoping we talk about that. Moshe, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Lucinda, for having me. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm I'm excited to hear about your book because I watched the YouTube trailer. I guess they call it a trailer, mm-hmm. uh, and I was intrigued. So I'm I'm hoping to hear about that. And then you said when we were uh, messaging back and forth that you're really into Stephen King, and I wanted to know how you got hooked on Stephen King, <laughs> how you got hooked on reading. Yes. So we. We have a few things to talk about. Do you want to talk about your book first? Perfect. Yes. Uh, le- let me do that. And I'm happy that you said that you got intrigued by the trailer because that's a point, I guess, of the trailer, right? Mm-hmm. So, yes, uh, the book is called The Resurrector. And this is uh, kind of a translation from the Hebrew verse or the Hebrew uh, wording that uh, of uh, someone that uh, resurrected that. Mm-hmm. And the, the idea of the story is this uh, what if. What if, you know, someone could bring someone from the dead? What would happen to their, um, you know, family, their uh, family relationship, etc.? But I didn't want it to be like a zombie type of book, you know, or just someone appears all of a sudden and everyone can see them. I wanted it to be a bit more of kind of a bit of magical realism in there, Mm -hmm. where uh, the, the idea is that, uh, not everyone can see that person, but only one person in the family can actually oh. see who the, the 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 dead person that came back to the dead. So I, I wrote this story about you know the background that I'm familiar with, and I was born and raised in Israel in uh, one of the religious cities over there mm-hmm. uh, f- to a religious uh, Orthodox family, and so so that's the background that I put in the story because I'm familiar with it and it was easy for me to write about. Uh, but it, it's completely fiction, of course. And the idea there was that there is this family, they were mourning the death of one of their uh, family members. Mm-hmm. So this is uh, called a Shiva in, in Judaism. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shiva in Hebrew is seven. So it's a seven days of mourning after the burial of the of the dead. And the family usually will sit and, and in their home and uh, people, they, they have specific rules about, you know, what they can do, what they cannot do. And then people will come over to give their condolences. And so, so this is what I, um, I put the setting around. And one of the strangers, one of the people coming to the Shiva house is a stranger and the family don't know him. And he gives the father of the family the power to see the, the dead person, which is the son. So the son passed, died 
unexpectedly, mm-hmm. and he uh, can see him. And uh, the magical realism that I put in there, in the beginning, the idea was to create almost a parallel world where the father can go into this parallel world and mm-hmm. uh, see the son. But then it, it morphed while I was writing the story more into a bit of a dreamscape. So it's a bit hard to understand how he actually get there, but he actually get there so he can see uh, the dead son and he can interact with him. And he basically follows him and he's trying to reconcile with him because they had some issues before he died. They didn't talk for two years. They had um, some issues between them. And that was like, you know, the, the trigger of the story. Yes. Oh, I love that. So then I am assuming that eventually they get their issues worked out. Well, that's uh, one needs to read the story to see that. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that idea, though, of being able to go and talk to someone who's passed and work mm-hmm. out or at least hopefully try to work out issues. That sounds really interesting. Mm-hmm. Yes, I I only know a little bit about the Jewish history from taking some classes when I was getting my degree in religious studies. And I was always fascinated by your history and just the the way you conduct your, your religion. And I don't know, I just thought it was really fascinating. So Mm -hmm. that's going to be interesting. I think you told me when it comes out, but tell when it comes out. Yeah, so I, I was accepted to release it, uh, to publish it with uh, New Degree Press, and it's coming out in December 2021. Can people pre-order it? And if so, can you send me the link so I can put it in the show notes? Um, actually, uh, the, the answer for that was yes until um, yesterday. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> but still send, okay. me the, send me the link where they mm-hmm. can go buy it when it is published. Yeah, for sure. Uh, absolutely. So w- what we did is uh, through uh, New Degree Press, uh, mm-hmm. one of the ways that this uh, publisher is working, it, it's a hybrid publisher. So it's mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. Um, a traditional one uh, mm-hmm. and it's not a self-publishing. It's somewhere in between. Eventually, I am pub- self-publishing it, but they give me all the full support of, of the publisher. And I had to pre-sell enough books to show interest and to show people are going to to read it. So that's what was available until yesterday. Oh, so I we see. did, yeah. So we did a crowdfunding on Indiegogo, mm-hmm. and I sold. Um, I, I got support from 160 people. Um, oh, good. Yeah, yeah, it, it was really awesome. It was hard to do, but it was very awesome that mm-hmm. you know I got all this support. Uh, some of them have bought multiple books, so this is both ebook and and paperback. If I would have continued it a few more weeks and, and raise more funds and, and get mm-hmm. more support, I would, could have done also maybe audiobook and stuff like that. But uh, for now, you know, I'm very happy that I got this support and I'll be able to, to release the book as is. Yes, and hopefully sometime you will be able to, to do an audiobook. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to do the audiobook because some people, that's how they like to read. And they told mm-hmm. me if it was audiobook, they will do it right away. I also actually want to translate it as well. So yes. uh, I wrote it in English, which is my mm-hmm. second language, actually. And most of the, my family are in Israel and they read in Hebrew. So mm-hmm. they would love it to be translated to Hebrew. So maybe that's mm-hmm. that will happen one day as well. Let's see. And you live in Toronto. English mm-hmm. English is the language in Toronto. It's yeah, I've, I've been living Quebec here for they, some time. Yeah, it's in Quebec that they speak French, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Oh, yes. So that's fascinating. I'm I want the name of the publisher and the links so that people can go buy it for mm-hmm. you. And maybe hopefully eventually you'll be able to have an audiobook. That will be great. That will be amazing. Yes. Now I'm I'm looking at some artwork behind you and I, I just want to ask about it. Is that your artwork back there? Yeah. Yes, yes. I, I used to paint also in the past. Oh, wow, that's so cool. My husband's a potter and a oh, graphic very artist. Nice. Very nice. Very yes. nice. So yeah. That's why I, I had to comment on that because my <laughs> husband's an artist too. Well, uh-huh. you said when we were discussing 
uh, whether what time and when we were going to have our meeting here, that you are an avid reader. And I wanted to know how you got hooked on reading. And then you also mm-hmm. said that you like Stephen King. Yes. So how did you get hooked on Stephen King? Can you answer <laughs> both of those questions? Of course. Yeah. So I, I always love to read, you know, since I was little, I always remember going to the library and getting books and, um, you know, reading quite a bit. Mm-hmm. and. I think Stephen King, I started reading him in high school. I'm not sure my parents even knew what I was reading. Maybe they would not have let me read it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> when my when my uh, kids were uh, in high school, I was like, yeah, I think there are some Stephen King books you could read and some of them maybe you should wait a bit with them or, mm-hmm. or something like that. But I got hooked on his books just you know, right away from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was in high school, uh, that's back in Israel, you know, I I read mostly in Hebrew, but I wanted to practice my English. We we learned English in high school and I really wanted to, you know, get better in English. So Mm -hmm. I decided um, to start reading uh, books in, in English. So Uh the, the first book that I read was actually Misery by Stephen King, because I read it in Hebrew before and I saw the movie so I knew, okay, I know the story. So probably it's going to be easier for me to understand the English. So that's what I did. And it wasn't one of his thicker books. It was normal size books. So it was mm-hmm. also been, made it easier. And, and I loved it. And, and, and since then, I always love to read the original language rather than the translation, uh, both when I read Hebrew and, and English. So mm-hmm. I don't like reading translation of Hebrew books to English. And I don't write to read English translation. Hebrew translation of English books mm-hmm, mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. It, it doesn't it doesn't come across the same way. The language changes, the yeah. ideas could change sometimes. Uh, it's unfortunate I cannot read in other languages because then I would also pick up the originals. So, yeah. you know, some some things I have to read the translations. I have no choice really. Yes, I have a friend who wanted to learn Polish so he could read the Witcher series in Polish. Mm-hmm. because he said he read them in English, but it was difficult reading because he thinks that some of the concepts were not actually able to translate very easily. Mm-hmm. So I only know a little bit of Spanish. I live near the Mexican border. so, And mm-hmm. I taught in, in schools where most of the students were uh, Spanish was their first language. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but I don't know very much. And I would like to get to the point where I could read books in Spanish. And that's that's one of the ways to really learn the language mm-hmm. is to be able to read their books. I, I know it's uh, it could be challenging sometimes, but um, mm-hmm. that's, what, that's why I did that, you know, reading a book that I already knew the story and, and, mm-hmm. and saw the movie and all of that stuff. So it definitely was a much easier. And Stephen King is is um, quite easy to read, I think, for mm-hmm. as a second language uh, books. His language is not too sophisticated. I mean, it's not too simple either. Mm-hmm. So he's great, mm-hmm. I think, th- that way. His ideas are very clearly, you know, presented. The challenge over there to me was more about the cultural references because he has a oh, lot right. of cultural references, especially to baseball. <laughs> <laughs> which so, you don't know anything about. Which I didn't know anything about. I learned everything I know about baseball from his books. <laughs> and I still don't like baseball. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, live in the United States and I'm not a baseball fan. <laughs> <laughs> so so if you don't like baseball, then there are some books that you might want to skip if you want, if you like to read yes. Stephen King. Yes. But uh, I, I also learned, you know, about the Red Sox a lot, tourist books, <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is really funny. But I really love the way that he always uh, had able to surprise me in his books. Oh, and yeah. and I love um, that his books are not really all about horror. People are thinking that it's mm-hmm. all horror, but it's mm-hmm. not all about horror. A lot of them are about fantasy about social psychology, sorry, Mm -hmm. but psychology horror more than Mm -hmm. than real horror. Mm -hmm. And he had some kind of normal stories as well in between them, some detective works that he did. And I think I picked up from that these little of, um, you know, supernatural ways of, Mm -hmm. of doing things. And and that's maybe uh, you know even my book the resurrector I, I I mentioned before some magical realism in it, so it's definitely not a horror book 
but uh, it has that aspect of what if you can do something something in a way that is supernatural that doesn't really usually happen. So you can thank Stephen King for some influence on your book. Probably yes. I I probably <laughs> I mean every every author I'm sure has influence influences from many different authors. Yes. Um, etc. So there is a uh, one thing that uh, is going on right now with the editing of my book because I tend to write long sentences and I know they can be very cumbersome mm-hmm. to readers. Mm-hmm. But when I read Hebrew authors, I don't know if there is uh, if the rules in Hebrew are different or it's easier for uh, for the readers. But sometimes I can read a whole paragraph that is just commas after commas after commas, mm-hmm. no dots, mm-hmm. no breakdown of 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 the sentences and stuff like that. So I may be influences by this type of writing and I kind of bring it into my English. Mm, mm-hmm. yeah. did, they, did the editors, who people helping you edit, did they say something about that, that you needed to break up the sentences? Yes. And I know, I mean, they do, and I'm, we're editing right now, mm-hmm. um, but I, I knew it also from the past, from different classes I took in creative writing uh, oh. here in, in University of um, uh, Toronto. And I always had that uh, bit of an issue to break down those uh, those sentences. Yes, mm-hmm. I I understand that because I had to do that in my first novel too, <laughs> and I speak mm-hmm. English. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I I wanted to know a couple of different things. One was, do you have a favorite Stephen King book? Um, definitely. I think Misery is one of them, but I, I mm-hmm. think I have a few favorite ones, uh, which is a problem to, to decide. There is one book that is less known. Uh, it's called uh, Rose Matter. And it's one of the books that I really, really liked when I read it the first time. Actually, it was the first audiobook that I ever listened to. And the, the, the one thing that I liked over there was that it's told in two voices, and the audiobook oh. is also told in two voices. One of them is of a woman, and the other one is is the husband. Mm-hmm. And the guy that is narrating the husband one is Stephen King himself. So oh. that was a bit uh, a bit of uh, interesting for me there. And I really I, I love that story. I, I don't know why. I mean, I know it's not one of the big ones that mm-hmm. that everyone knows, like you know, it or whatever. I also love his um, Black Tower series, yeah. which is a series of seven books. Yeah. Uh, it's a whole world and he claims that this is like his main world that he's always coming back to mm-hmm. and everything, all the other stories, everything is around it. There is different concepts over there of, you know, parallel worlds and uh, future worlds, past worlds, uh, lots of different, very interesting uh, things going on in these books. I um, have not read that, but I did see a movie that got panned people said, oh, it's not very good. But I didn't mm-hmm. know anything about the books. And so mm-hmm. I was fascinated by the movie. And I like mm-hmm. Idris Elba a whole lot anyway. So yeah, so I might have to go read that. The only, yeah. I, I have to confess, the only Stephen King book that I've ever read is The Stand. Mm, the Stand is great. I love The Stand as well. So and I yeah. I read it because I had seen the mini series that they did in the nineties in the mm. United States of that one. So, and I loved it. And so mm. I read the stand and yeah. yeah. So I'll have to go check out black tower series. That yeah. sounds interesting. And uh, the dark tower. Yeah. Sorry. If I said the black tower, the dark tower. Oh no, I think you did say I wrote black tower, but oh, okay. I think you did say <laughs> dark tower. Yeah. You did yeah. say that. And another great book. If you, if you want another recommendation is eleven twenty two sixty three. Which oh, okay. is, yeah, which is about the uh, assassination of uh, JFK. Right. And it's a really, really good book. Oh, yes. I've heard about that one, too. Mm-hmm. About Yes. I'll have to look at that one, too. Yeah. Because I was in fifth grade when that happened. Mm. And it was quite traumatic for the country. Yeah. So, yeah. but now I wanted to know, you said you've taken some creative writing classes, Mm-hmm. What is your education in? Is it in English? Is it in writing? Is it in? No, not at all. My background is in software development. Um, I did uh, software development back in the army in Israel, and then I learned mm-hmm. it in the university. And I worked for twenty years doing software development. Mm-hmm. 
And um, then uh, I'm still in software development, but now I'm what is called a product manager. Oh. So in the last 10 years, I'm doing product management, which is part of, it's one of the positions uh, in, in software companies usually. Mm-hmm. And the writing was something that I always wanted to do. And I didn't really know how to do it. I started writing more, uh, you know, blogs and and um, articles and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So when I was painting, uh, when I was doing the art that you mentioned before, I, I had my own uh, website and I write a blog over there about, you know, trying to be an artist, uh, which was also a struggle for me and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Because I did it as a as a side hustle and between mm-hmm. jobs when I lost a job in, in a company that closed up. And uh, then I also wrote as a guest blogger and I wrote for a couple of newspapers, local newspapers here in, in Toronto. Oh. Uh, one of them was a Hebrew uh, um, oh. newspaper. And after that, I, I kind of uh, decided to, uh, I got into writing this, this book that I wrote mm-hmm. uh, in a program called NaNoWriMo. Um, oh, yes. So I wrote this book in NaNoWriMo 2013. And uh, I did it with my daughter. She was in grade nine, my oldest daughter back then. Uh-huh. And she decided to do Dynorama with her friends. And I was like, uh, sure, yeah, we'll do it with you. Why not? And and after a month, I had this story, which was really, it, it was a good story, but it was very bad, badly written. And <laughs> I was like, okay, so I have to do something with this now. <laughs> so I decided to take those classes at uh, U of T in their mm-hmm. continuous education school. And uh, so I took uh, probably about 10 classes or something like that uh, during the year since mm-hmm. and and edited the book a few times. I got also a freelancer editor to, to read it for, you know, and give me feedback a few years ago mm-hmm. and some beta readers. But I never had really the courage to, to publish it until I got into this program with a new degree press. That's so cool. I love mm-hmm. it. Well, okay. now, can you tell about NaNoWriMo? And I won't, because I have looked at doing that, but what does it stand for again? Uh, National uh, Novel Writing Month. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they do it every November? Yeah, that- so it's every November. They have also in the summer, they call it NaNoWriMo Camp, I think. But this one, the main oh. event is in November, every November for the 30 days of the month. Mm-hmm. Uh, you commit to write 50,000 words. Oh, yeah. 50, right. Yeah. So they give you the tools, you register, they give you the tools like the count of words and stuff like that. It, it's, you know, it's, it's, um, there is no award at the end and it's all, uh, you know, an honor system. So you can mm-hmm. put in there as many words as you want. But mm-hmm. the idea is, is really to do it for you. But it's also a non-profit, non-for-profit organization that raises funds to support literacy, I believe. And uh, that, that's, I think, is part of the idea is for mm-hmm. people to, to get into it and, and raise, as, raise money as well. Mm-hmm. So at the end, when, when you, if you're done with the 50,000 words, you get basically a badge or a certificate that you won that year. Oh, that's so cool. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, and then they, they set it up so that, you submit something every day and then they add up the words at the, at the end. Is that um, correct? I can't. The last time I did it was 2014, 2015. So I don't mm-hmm. remember if you actually submit the words or you sub, I think you submit the words and it counted. And then, and then it tells you how many words you have mm-hmm. or you just submit the count. No, I think you have to submit the. I can't remember exactly. And it, it might've changed since as well. Oh, so that's I, true. I've, yeah, yes. so I've done it in 2013 and 2014 and I, then 2015. Ah. And in 2013, I wrote The Resurrector. In 2014, I wrote another book, actually, that is still waiting for, mm-hmm. for me somewhere. Mm-hmm. And then in 2015, I didn't finish it, but I had a lot of, uh, you know, vinge- uh, you know snippets of, of story that mm-hmm. might come to something in the future. So mm-hmm. there is some ideas there. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is so exciting. Mm-hmm. Now, do they have a chapter for Canada and a chapter for the United States? It's That's a right? worldwide, it's a worldwide thing. So oh, everyone, worldwide. yeah, oh. everyone can can join in. What they do have is they have a lot of uh, local communities that are meeting up to just write together. Mm. So these are organized just by local people. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can join these communities. So, so I joined the one here in, in Toronto mm-hmm. and they arranged one time, I think it was in 2015. 
I don't remember the year, but I think they do do it every year. They arrange these uh, different events in in you know coffee shops and restaurants, and people just come and join. Oh, but and what we it just sit and write exactly. Mm-hmm. What uh, I did one where where uh, we went to the subway. Mm-hmm. And there is a, a line that goes, um, you know, I don't even remember how many stations, but it, it's, we, we basically went to the first station and we took everyone that joined us took uh, like one of the cars, we were sitting in that car mm-hmm. and then um, it was on the weekend. So it also wasn't very busy mm-hmm. and we drove all the way to the end of the line and back. And while we do um, that, we were writing on, on the train. The whole time. <laughs> I, I love that because at one point I saw on Facebook or someplace this this thing about taking a train trip to do that same thing. But I was like with mm-hmm. Amtrak, you know, mm-hmm. so you go from like Des Moines, Iowa to Denver or something and back again <laughs> to yeah, do yeah. your writing. It depends how much time you want to spend. And then, you yeah. know, how much you want to pay for the ticket, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, subway ticket is not very expensive. And and the time it took us was probably around two hours or something like that. Yes, that's so, a great block of time. Yeah, exactly. And then and then you get the energy of everyone sitting there and, and writing at the same time. Yes. And people coming in on the stations and, and they're like, oh, what are you old guys doing sitting there with computers <laughs> and writing? <laughs> Uh, so so it brings up some interesting interactions as well. I love that. That's great. Mm-hmm. We don't have subways where I live. I live in the country. So mm. uh, and the towns around us are fairly small. They don't they have a bus that goes mm-hmm. from one city to an you know one town to I, another. I could not have written on a bus. I can re- I can write on the train or read on a train, but I cannot read and write on a bus. Yeah, the the bus, there's not enough room. On a bus. It's it's not that. It's emotion. I get motion sickness if I read on a bus. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. I so too. I'm okay on, yeah, I'm okay on, on mm-hmm. a plane and on a train, but not on a bus or a car. <laughs> so it wouldn't work on a boat either. Yeah. On a boat, probably not. Depends how big it is. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm, if it's a cruise boat and I'm passed by, what? you know, the initial uh, mm-hmm. sickness, I, will, I should be okay. <laughs> yes. Well, the bigger ships, I because I've been on a big, fairly large ship. Well, it was a f- technically a ferry uh, mm-hmm. going from the Netherlands to England. And I couldn't really feel the motion. Mm-hmm. But smaller boats, I've been on smaller boats. And when we lived mm-hmm. in Portland, Oregon, on the river, on Columbia mm-hmm. River, but I also did, uh, I was the stage manager for a play on a river boat mm. and I didn't get sick on the river boat either. So mm-hmm. yeah, the play was on the river boat. We went from nice. Portland down to the Dalles or something and back. I can't remember. Mm. Exactly. Very nice. So yeah, the bigger the boat, the better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the nice thing about the subway was that uh, I think it was at the year that I wrote a story that is in happening in the subway. Mm-hmm. So it also gave me a bit of inspiration there. Oh, yes, really? Uh-huh. Though that's a fun, that's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun story, actually. And uh, I was debating when I was uh, going with um, New Degree Press, which story to submit to them, because mm-hmm. I was usually, uh, this press is interesting because they're working with this um group called the Creator uh, Institute, and both of them are affiliated with uh, the Georgetown University in, in Washington, D.C. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the Creator Institute, they it's a program for uh, aspiring authors to write a book. And then if, if their book is good enough, then they will go into the publishing process. So most of the people that, that publish with them have gone through the Creator uh, Institute. Mm-hmm. But when I contact them, I already had a manuscript and I told them I have a manuscript. So, uh, you know, do I need to write a new one <laughs> to go through this program? And they said, no, if, if I have the manuscript, I can submit it. And if it's, if it's uh, you know, meeting their standards, then uh, I will go directly into the publishing so oh, that's nice. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I went with the Resurrector because I already worked on it much more. It was mm-hmm. much more ready for mm-hmm. publication. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, do they help you with the marketing and that kind and the promotion? Do they help you with that? 
So the, it's a program that we have um, personal coaches and then we have also weekly oh. workshops. So every week we have a workshop about different topics. So some of them are uh, marketing related, some of them are editing related, some of them mm. are, uh, you know, uh, social media. So a lot of different things. Mm. So through the pre-sale period, we definitely talked about marketing and different ideas on how to to market the book and how to approach people and stuff like that. A lot was related to, uh, you know, templates that they have that we can use, uh, how can modify them, uh, different ideas to, to create, you know, uh, perks and, and other specials. So people will get interest. So at the end of the day, it's really a self-publishing, but they give mm-hmm. me all of this support and help. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for me, it was really good uh, because I like structure and I like to be in a program that, will give me this structure so Mm. I'm accountable for it Mm -hmm. and I have deadlines and I'm like, okay, by this time I have to do this and by this time I have to do that. And I'm also learning a lot through the process. So I I love learning new stuff. And to me, it feels almost like, you know, I'm, I'm back in school and I'm learning every week something new and I'm trying to apply it and, Mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. So that's, that's also good. Yeah, that's neat. Mm -hmm. So, So while you were talking, I had a question and now I can't think what it is. So Mm -hmm. that's okay. Do you have any other books or authors, maybe I should say, that you gravitate toward besides Stephen King? Mm. I would read almost anything, really. So I, I, you know, whatever catch my attention, I read a lot of uh, Agatha Christie in the past. Um, I read you know different uh i like also uh historical fictions that mm-hmm. are placed either in ancient egypt or ancient rome mm-hmm. so i read a few series of books that are in those periods of time i don't remember the names of all the authors <laughs> like i do with stephen king but Pauline Gage is one of them that uh, she writes. She wrote a lot of books about uh, ancient Egypt, and she really brings that that period to to life. I read a series. I can't remember the name, but I I can look it up. It, it's a guy that he's writing uh, stories about ancient Rome, mm-hmm. where there is a detective in ancient Rome, but he, he they didn't call him detective back then. They call of him uh, yeah, they call him something else. And he brings, so some of the story, some of the books are more about these um, murders that he's trying to mm-hmm. to uh, solve. And some of them are more about the politics. So it brings a lot of the ancient Rome history to life with uh, Caesar and Pompey and the different mm-hmm. uh, relationships over there and, and, and a lot of the politics and what happens exactly while he's weaving his detective guy and his family story oh. into so, so I really like that. Well, you'll have to send me the the link or the name for that because I like I'm reading now the CAD file series series, which takes place in England in the 1100s, mm. and he's a monk. He used to he was in the Crusades, and now he's a monk, and he solves mysteries. And so I thought that would be fun to the ancient Rome. That mm-hmm. would be fun. Yes. The name here, I just found it. The name of the author is Stephen Saylor. And oh, that's, yeah. is it P-H? S-T-E-P-H? Uh, no, uh, V. S-T-E-V-E-N. Saylor. But it's it's a whole set of, I'll look him of, up. of, of stories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That sounds great. That sounds yeah. fun. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. So you have to work full time and you're, that's your... My, I, one of the authors that I talked to recently said, my side job is to work at Walmart. <laughs> my real <laughs> job is to be an author. Uh-huh. Um, so, but, so when do you write? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. When I was commuting or when I wrote this, this story, these books that I mentioned before, mm-hmm. um, I would write even on the subway. So I would write on my phone or the subway and then send it to myself at the end and, and mm-hmm. add it to the file mm-hmm. and, and whatever. But I'm trying to, you know, to find time to write as much as I can uh, in the evenings, on the weekends, mm-hmm. you know, I, I in, in front of the TV, it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I, it's, it's, it's definitely a challenge because uh, it's not, you know, 
Like I can set up a routine like many authors can. Uh, mm -hmm. That they wake up in the morning, they have their their morning routine, and then they, you know, they spend a few hours right in the morning. Then they go on a walk and they have their lunch, and then mm -hmm. they have their nap, and then they have uh, a few hours <laughs> in the afternoon. And then... I'm not sure there are a whole lot of yes, authors know, who can. Have that's a maybe routine. that's maybe what I'm dreaming that authors are doing. <laughs> Well, yes, maybe somebody like Nora Roberts or someone like that who's mm -hmm. sold a whole bunch of books can have that kind of schedule. But most of the authors I talk to have a job and then they write on the side. And now, so do you, you mentioned your website? Do you have still have a website and a blog? Yeah. So my website is is mikanovsky.com. And over there, I kind of uh, have you know, dual personality. I have uh, <laughs> like my my author website and then I have uh -huh. my product website. So product mm -hmm. website is my, you know, day job professional life website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and the author is about the book and about writing mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. So mm -hmm. is there like a tab for your author page and a tab for your other product there there are two options over there to go into okay, either one and then when you select uh to go to author it takes you to author.mikonowski.com and when you select product oh. management it takes you to product.mikonowski.com yes. and then each one of them is like almost like a separate site they look mm -hmm. very similar mm -hmm. um and i publish over there different you know blog posts and mm -hmm. And stuff like that. I, I revamp it or redid it recently. I still think it could be better. I've seen much better mm -hmm. website than this one, but uh, <laughs> at least it's it's a place to be. And and you know, I put also links over there to different uh, podcasts that I'm participating as a guest. I also have a podcast that I host, but this one is more on the product side. Oh, uh huh. Because I I do love product management. I do love doing this. So it's still kind of like two two loves that I have uh, at the same time. That's great, though. That's mm -hmm. neat to have more than one thing so that you like if something yeah. happens and you can't do one, you can fall back and do the other. Well, that's that's what happened. You know, when I was trying to be an artist, I knew that oh. I still have to feed my family. So I had to find a job and and mm -hmm. so I can pay the mortgage because uh, I couldn't really sell too many art, too many paintings. Mm -hmm. But now my house is has lots of painting all over. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to have uh, some sort of a, uh, maybe you can give away or sell a, a, at a very discounted price. One of your paintings when as part of the promotion for your books. I actually, that's what I, I actually did when I, when I sold the, uh, in the pre-sale period of the book, mm -hmm. I only did it for people in Toronto because shipping is a bit harder. Oh yes. Uh, but um, I offered like some of my paintings and some prints as some perks with the book. Mm -hmm. uh, there are not too many people that, that jumped on it, only a couple. So I think that either my art is not that great and people don't really like it, or they were just more interested in the book and that's it. Well, that could be true too. <laughs> yeah. And that's, and you reminded me for some reason, the question that I was going to ask you earlier, who designed the cover for your book? So that's part of the program as well. Uh, we are going to have a designer with uh -huh. a new degree press and we will work with the designer to create the design. Mm -hmm. And actually we will have three designs and the people that supported me in the pre-sale will be the people that will vote for the best design. And that's yeah. how we will choose it. Mm -hmm. The one they like the best. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's great. Mm -hmm. Love that. That's wonderful. I'm mm -hmm. lucky because my husband's an artist, a graphic artist, and he designed yeah. the cover for my book. Yeah, so. No, that's that's perfect. And and that's my wife told me, oh, you should design your own, uh, uh, you know, because I, I can mm -hmm. paint. My daughter actually is even more creative and, and she's a better artist than I am. So we, we are thinking, oh, OK, maybe she will do it. And then uh, I have a few artists that, you know, from my art life uh, mm -hmm. i have still artist friends mm -hmm. and one of them was like oh yeah, yeah i can do that for you as well so, <laughs> so i think that we between between all, all of us uh, we probably will figure out uh, if not the final design but maybe some ideas well that's wonderful yeah mm -hmm. it's good to have it's good to have more than one option yeah and and book designs have their own um, 
like you can see if a book uh, cover is a good one or not. You can actually feel it, I think. Mm-hmm. So it mm-hmm. it is an art by itself to capture the attention and to make it really pop. And also to give the reader maybe an idea of what the book is about. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, when you put a book in front, you know, in, in, a, in a bookstore or in the library, there are so mm-hmm. many other books competing for attention. Oh, that yes. yeah so you want really to to have something that will give the the feeling of what the book is going to be mm-hmm. give the idea of what the book is going to be and mm-hmm. then pop out like against everything else around it mm-hmm. i have picked books just based on the cover i picked mm-hmm. it picked them up and then read the little blurb at the back sometimes mm-hmm. the blurbs aren't exactly what the book is really about <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah i've done that yeah I picked up this book because i just love the cover yeah mm-hmm. definitely definitely and then it turned out to be a good book thank mm-hmm. heaven <laughs> <laughs> and if not then you just you know you don't have to finish every book you start right? no that's true i don't finish every book i start now i mm-hmm. used to i used to have this thing where i felt like i had to finish it yeah me too but i just have such a long to be read list that i can't do that anymore so do you have anything else you want to say well, I first of all, I really enjoyed you know our our discussion because I always love to speak with people that love books and love reading book and mm-hmm. and also helping um, new indie writers like me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's that's really awesome. Not really. I mean, if anyone wants to contact me and and um, be in touch and connect with me, I will be more than happy. And hopefully, one day we can also meet in person. That would be fantastic. Mm-hmm. I'll have to come to Toronto. I've never been there. <laughs> oh, it's a it's a very nice city. It's a very nice city. It's be, uh, well, I've seen it on film, and it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. So, so send me the link for your book so that I can put mm-hmm. that in the show notes, sure. and then I will put also in the show notes. I will put your website so people can connect with you there. Perfect. Yeah. So I will send you the the book is coming out in December. So only then oh, yeah. we will ha- yeah, we will have the actual link where people can buy it. Until then, I'm not sure when the show will air, but uh, if it's before that, then I can send you the link to the pre-sale so people can learn what the book is all about. And yeah, and, and also see that uh, aud- uh, video that you mentioned in, in the beginning of yes. the show. Yes. Um, on the, well, I already have that on my desktop so that I can have the link to put into the show notes. So what I could also do is maybe a link on my website for people that want to know when the book is available so I can yes. tell them once it's available. Yes, that would be fantastic. Yes. Mm-hmm. October is a perfect time to be buying for if you're a Christian for Christmas. Yeah, we want to sell as many books for you as possible. Perfect. Yeah. And about the same time, it's Hanukkah. So it's always like... I know. Yeah. Well, thank you for being my guest. I appreciate our conversation so much. Same here. Thank you for having me. It was uh, really a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you like what you heard, please share it with a friend and give us a review on your favorite podcast app. It will help people find us. You'll find the show notes for this episode at my website, Sage Woman Chronicles at sagewoman.life. You can leave a comment there. And remember, as Philip Pullman said, after nourishment, shelter, and companionship, stories are the thing we need most in the world. Until next time, this is Lucinda Sage Midgordon. Thanks for listening.